it's possible with you. And so, God, we just place them in your hands. We ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you do the work that is needed. You know what's needed in the life, and you can provide what is needed. God, we pray this special prayer for her. And God, we just uh, ask that you would uh, touch them in a mighty way. God, not only this one, but so many more that's in our, our ICUs and hospitals and those that are struggling and fighting for life. God, we just ask that you heal them. God, you heal our land. You heal our nation. God, we'll give you the praise, glory, and honor. It'll be another time, God, where we'll have a testimony of your goodness and your greatness. God, we just want to praise you this day. Just be with us. Watch over. Keep us what we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated there just briefly and grab a hold of your Bible. Find the book of Genesis. If you can't find that one, it's going to be a long day. We're in Genesis chapter 35 this morning. And I want to begin our study today uh, in, in, in Genesis 35. I'm going to read the first seven verses. And it's a, a story where we find God telling Jacob to go to Bethel. In which he is to build an altar. And the, the, the thing is, is why God commanded him to build this altar, why he wanted him to go to Bethel, why he wanted to build an altar, is because nearly 30 years earlier, Jacob had made a vow. And God wants to keep, him, keep his vow. And I want to preach today on the forgotten vow of Jacob. And I want you to see that when we make a vow to God, God expects us to hold our vows. Amen. God expects us to keep those vows. And to do that really is a slap in the face to God. And, and, and we're going to see that in the life of Jacob today. And if you made a vow to God, and let me just share this with you. If you're a Christian, you made a vow to God, you was going to try to live your life without sin. You was going to praise Him and worship Him. And, uh, and that's what Christians do. And I, I just look around and say, how many people are holding that vow? How many people are keeping the vow uh, of the Christian walk in the day and time that we live in? And so I, I, want to, I just want to share this, and I want you to see Jacob's life. And I'm going to give you a few things, the reasons why we don't keep our vows. And, and, and the repercussions of that. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Genesis 35. I'm going to read the first seven verses. As always, when you rise to your feet to pay tribute to the reading of God's Word, Genesis 35, verses 1 through 7. Verse 35, uh, chapter 35, verse 1 says, And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there. And make there an altar unto God that appeareth unto thee where thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. Amen. And let us arise and go up to Bethel. And I will make thee an altar unto God. I will make there an altar unto God. Who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all their strange gods which were in their hands, and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. And they journeyed. And the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, which is in the land of Canaan, that is Bethel, he and all the people that were with him. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word for you bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come today to look at vows. God, so many times we make vows that we do not keep. God, that we see in the life of Jacob. God, where you held him accountable for that vow. God, I pray today that if we've made a vow to you, today is a day that we keep our promise. God, if we haven't been keeping our promise, today is the day when we bow down before you as Jacob did. And we honor our vows. Just go with us, watch over, keep us, forgive us where we fail you, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If I could, before I get into sermon this morning, I want to kind of get into the background uh, of, of what's going on, and, 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 and then we'll get into the, into, the sermon, into the sermon. So let's look at the historical background. I just want to catch you up to speed where we are. Hang on real quick, I want to go through it real quick. 30 years before what we just read, 30 years before Jacob had made a vow. 
It, it, it was made when he was fleeing the wrath of Esau. If you remember, he, he stole the blessing of Esau. And so Esau was pursuing him and uh, after he had stolen Esau's blessing from the father Isaac. And so he left Beersheba and he had headed toward uh, Haran. Now when he got to Haran on the, or, or, or on the way, he stopped at what was called Bethel. And so he's fleeing from his brother. He has stolen the, the blessing from the father. He is fleeing from his brother. And so he comes to this place, Bethel. Now you remember some of this about Jacob. At Bethel, I don't know if you remember this or not, but he laid his head upon a rock and he went to sleep. And while he was asleep, he had a dream of a staircase that came down out of heaven down to the earth. And so in this dream, we call it Jacob's Ladder. Y'all know that as a child, right? Uh, maybe you've read this. Uh, uh, he saw what is commonly called Jacob's Ladder. And there were angels that were ascending and descending on the ladder between heaven and earth. By the way, uh, this is just me, and this is not really what the Bible says. I, I've often thought about this. Jacob called that really the, the, the doorway to heaven. Jacob said it. That was the doorway to heaven. I often wondered if that's where Christ is going to come back. I, I wonder if that's where we're going to gather in this place that he saw in this, this, this doorway of heaven. Where this, I, I, that's just me. When Christ comes back, or is that where it's, uh, is that's going to happen? I don't know. Just kind of in my mind. I, the doorway of heaven. I thought about that. And so Jacob kind of realized this as being uh, the doorway uh, of heaven that was there. And so in his dream, while he's seeing this, this Jacob flatter, God promises to be with him. And this is what God, God says. God says, I promise you that one day you'll be able to go back home safely. That's what he says. He says, God, God tells him in this dream that I'll be with you. Matter of fact, God tells him, you're going to prosper. Matter of fact, he, he shared with him that uh, the, the land that, that he is on is going to be great. It's going to belong to him. And when he wakes up, God tells him to take that stone that he is laying on his head and, and, and to build an altar there and that that land would be sanctified. And so that's what happened. For the next 20 years, now that was 30 years before, for the next 20 years after that, Jacob dwells in Haran. I just want to get you up to speed. And, and God promises uh, uh, that, that he's going to be with him. And Jacob does prosper. Man, his family really grows. Uh, Genesis, uh, uh, Genesis 29 through 30 tells us that. And so, uh, as he gets ready to come back, as he gets ready to come back, God now wants him to hold out or, 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 or hold on to his vow. Now, during that time he's in Iran, y'all, real quick, I'm just going to bring you speed real quick. You remember he works uh, seven years and he wants to get Rachel as his wife, and Laban gives him Leah. And then he turns around and works another uh, period of time to get Rachel his wife. And through, through Leah and Rachel, he has many, many children. Many of the tribes, right? There comes a point where he gets so wealthy, he finally looks at Laban and he says, God has told me to go back home. Laban doesn't like that. Matter of fact, here's the fear that he has. He's, got to, he's going to go back and he's got to face Esau. He's afraid of that too. But God had promised him he would take care of him. So with all of that said, I know I'm going to real quick back because I want to get to the point. With all of that said, we pick up now where we are right here. And so in, in, in chapter 35, verse 1, it says, And God says unto Jacob, Arise and go to Bethel. Bethel was the place you know, where, where he was going back home where he had made the vow. He, and this is the vow that he made to God. God said, She said you would be with me. God, you will always be my God. That was the vow he said. I promise you, God, you will always be my God. That's what he said in Bethel when he's fleeing from Esau. All right? That's the vow. Let's pick up. Let's begin in chapter 31, or 35, verse 1. As we look really now at the application of what's going on. Listen, uh, by, the, by the next 20 years, uh, uh, he's dwelt in Iran. And by the time of our text, Jacob had been living in Canaan 10 years. He had settled near the city of Shechem, but he, he had not bothered to go back to Bethel. Listen, he'd been on the outskirts. He had settled near Shechem. I'll say that again. But he had not bothered to go back to Bethel where the Lord had appeared unto him and where he had made his vow. He had never went back. He had never, listen, he had never, matter of fact, the Bible tells us that his people had strange gods. Notice that. 
And so let's look at the application now about this vow because God wants him to go back. God wants him to go back to the land where he had made that vow. And God wants him to hold that vow that God is going to be his vow. Uh, God's going to be his God. Let's look at the application. First of all, God expects us, because we know that he asked Jacob to, to go back to his land, God expects us to keep the vows that we make. Or whatever that vow is, he does not take vows lightly. Uh, I, I'm telling you, we, we read in the Bible where there were two that went out and sold property. And they, they made a vow to give it to the church, and they held some back. Ananias and Sapphira, we know the story, and they died at sunset because they made a vow unto God, and they didn't keep the vow, and so they ended up dying before the sunset on that day. We can find many times where God has, has asked people to, to, to keep their vow, and so he doesn't take vows lightly, and neither should we. Ecclesiastes 5, through, uh, 2 through 5, you might want to write that down and go check it out. God expects us to hold uh, our vow. So let's be sure to keep any covenant our vow that we've made with God. For example, and I mentioned this earlier, the vow we made when we become Christians. When we become Christians, we told God that we made a vow to God that we were going to turn from sin and that we were going to follow Christ with all of our hearts. Are we faithfully keeping that vow? Now, how does our life look with all the vows that we made to God? I'm telling you, I've seen people many a time make vows in situation and circumstance. I'll talk about that in just a moment. And, and, and when things are better, they don't keep their vow. But I'm telling you, God who is the eternal God, and we saw this in, in our study in Revelation, even our prayers are contained in heaven. We find uh, the bowls that are there. It said that the elders held bowls, and, and inside of that was, the, inside these vessels were the prayers of the saints. When we pray in our, in our, in our prayers get into the eternal, when our prayer is heard by the eternals, they don't go away. Our prayers don't go away. They don't die somewhere. Uh, we find the example in Revelation where it said the prayers of the saints are being held. Well, I believe this too. When you make a vow to a God uh, who is the eternal God, when you make a vow uh, into the heavens, it doesn't pass away. God expects us to hold our vows. What vows have you made to God? What commitments uh, have you promised that you would do that you're not doing right now? I tell you, we got a church here coming up where we need people who will make a commitment to serve in the church and make a vow to this church and a vow to God that they will serve in the next coming year in whatever capacity that God sees fit. Are you faithfully keeping your vows? So first thing I want to start off with is saying that God expects us. He expected Jacob. He tells Jacob, go back to Bethel. Go back to the place where you made that vow. Uh, where you said I would be your God. I'm telling you, he said I would keep you safe. And I want you to know I've kept my part. So you go back to that place. Back to the beginning where you made uh, your vow. Now the second thing I want to share this morning is this. Second, we are prone to forget our vows when God, listen to this, when God has fulfilled his vow. We seem to forget our vows when God has fulfilled His side. We see where God had fulfilled His side with Jacob. He told Jacob, he said, I'll protect you from your brothers. He said, I'll protect you from Laban. Matter of fact, he says, I'll give you the land where you go. And he says, I will make you prosper. And by the way, he has done that. He has prospered uh, under while he was with Laban. He, that, that the flock grew and uh, so many of the animals grew there. That he took some of those with him when he left. But the fact of the matter is that God had fulfilled his side, but Jacob had not. In other words, he kind of forgot about the vow that he made that God was going to be his God. He forgot about uh, going back to the place uh, where he had made that vow. This forgetfulness seems to occur most often when vows are made in times of trouble. This is when Jacob made that vow. He was fleeing from Esau. He was fleeing from his brother. And so in the moment of trouble, it's easy to make a vow to God. How many times have we in the moment in our life when there's been trouble? Uh, it, some have said that uh, the greatest prayers that are prayed are prayers prayed in a foxhole. No doubt. The prayers that are prayed are, are, are the vows that are made uh, in, a, in a foxhole. How about this? How many, uh, I don't know how many of y'all like to fly or are scared to fly. It doesn't bother me to fly. Uh, but uh, uh, there's a lot of people on airplanes, I guarantee you, made vows on airplanes when they went through some turbulent weather. When they thought the plane was falling out of the sky. I, I'll say this again. Y'all not afraid of flying. There's nobody afraid of flying. You're afraid of falling. 
Matter of fact, you want to fly when you're in a plane. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. But there are people in those moments, in those times, in a marital problem, when a marital problem is going on, how they may vow. Sometimes in sickness, sometimes in the abuse of alcohol. I've seen many of people uh, hugging that, uh, that toilet and they're throwing their guts up, making a vow to God that if God got them through the night, they wouldn't drink another drop. Next morning, they'll be right back drinking another drop. We make so many vows in, 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 the, in our struggles and, and we forget about those times when God holds his son. I, I'm telling you, so many times vows are just, uh, listen, they're, they're just as binding as those that, uh, uh, that, that are made with careful reflection. In other words, just because uh, uh, you was in a troubled time in your life and you made a vow doesn't mean that it's any less pending or any less binding than when you're thinking things through rationally. Jacob was the same way. Jacob was fleeing from his brother Esau. He had stolen the blessing from his father. And, and so he was afraid. And so when he runs, he gets there and he lays his head down. And God tells him this. God says, I will be with you. And Jacob gets up and says this. And he builds an altar and he says, I promise you, God, that God, you will be my God. If you do all of this, you will be my God. Now, God has told him this, this 30 years down the road to go back to that place where he made a vow. Now why did God tell him that? Because Jacob had forgotten. Jacob had forgotten the vow that he had made to God. In that place called Bethel. Why? Because God had been so generous. Listen Jacob again under Laban. Their, their flock has increased tremendously. He has two wives. And, and he has many children now. And, 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 and many descendants that is coming from him. And life is good. The land is good. He's got a bunch of land. Land is prosperous. He, he is wealthy. Everything that God had promised him had come to fruition in Jacob's life. But somehow, someway, Jacob had forgotten. Yeah, he had made that vow under distress. But yet God had kept every point of what God had said. So we see a lot of times we forget when God has fulfilled his side, we seem to forget the vow. The next thing, the third thing, I got five of these, we've got to go real quick. The third thing is this. We are prone to forget our vows when things are going well. Not only when God had kept his side, but as I share with you, Jacob's life had gotten really easy. Jacob's life had gotten really good. Uh, Jacob's life had become a real prophet. He had a nice family. Oh, how many times have people made a vow? Oh, if, if I just had a nice family, this. God, I promise you, if my family was better, or God, you would do this in my family, then God, I promise you this. He had become extremely wealthy. How many times in our life have we said, God, if I just had more money to do this. God, if there was just more money in my account so that we could have this. God, I promise you I would do this. How many times have we made that vow? He had settled down in his own country that had become his land. Uh, and, and I'm just telling you, it was a, uh, it, it, life was good for Jacob. And, and so the same is often true with many a Christian. Many obey the gospel at times in their life when they are troubled, no doubt. Uh, they cry out to a God and, and God is the only one that can fix them. We know that. But later... It seems, especially if they're enjoying financial security, uh, if, if life is good, if things are well with their family, if things are going good at work, they forget their commitment to God and to Christ. I see it all the time. You do too. But consider, but consider God had given a warning before to, uh, to Israel against forgetfulness after they had entered into the promised land. And you want to check that out. I'm just telling you. God, uh, God reminded them of their forgetfulness. And God gave them warning. Deuteronomy 8, 11 through 20. You can go look it up. Matter of fact, God gave warning to some churches. In the book of Revelation that we've studied. Because they forgot certain things. And so we are prone to forget our vows. When things are going well. I love what you said brother Greg. How many times have we stopped just to thank him for the, his goodness. 
Uh, how many times when we sit down at a meal are we thankful for his meal? How many times during the day do we thank God for the good things that he's done? Because God has kept his side of the deal. God has kept his vow. Sometimes we forget. We forget when things are well. So many times, I've said before, we put God on a shelf and, and we only get him down off the shelf when we need, when we have a need, when there's a disaster in our life, when there's trouble, when there's tears being shed. It is at those times that we cry out to God. And it is those times or all times we make those vows that we're not keeping. I've seen many a people stand uh, uh, in a church and make vows. I've seen people stand on, 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 on the stage and, and make a vow. I, I've seen people make a vow in their Sunday school classes. I, I've seen people make vows to the whole church and yet not keep their vow. I'm telling you that God expects us to keep our vows. Don't forget. Don't forget. Jacob had forgotten Go back and, if you will, with me and just let's look at this story again. Verse 35, and God said to Jacob, arise and go to Bethel. That's exactly the place where he had made that vow and dwell there. And he says, and make there an altar unto God that appeared, listen to this, when God, that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. When you was in your trouble, when you was in, your, in the terror of the night, when you was afraid to go to sleep because you are afraid your brother was going to come. It was there at Bethel you made a vow. You made a vow. Oh, when things are going well, we seem to forget. Fourth thing, real quick. We're prone to forget our vows when we have allowed ourselves to be influenced by the world. When we've become influenced. In other words, God's priority, God is a priority, gets moved down the list. The vow that we've made about being in God's house and studying His Word and all those things that we vow unto God over a period of time when things get going well and things are good, God gets shuffled down of the list. Know that Jacob, I want you to see this. Uh, listen, uh, God had blessed Jacob again and, and, and He tells him to go in that verse, go back to the place where you made your vow when you was in trouble, when you fled, verse 1, when you fled from the face of Esau, thy brother. Now look at verse 2. This will show you where they had gotten. And then Jacob said to his household. Let me tell you what his household was doing. Let me tell you where they had gotten in the vow that they had forgotten about God being their God. Then Jacob said to his household and to all that was there with him, put away the strange gods. Isn't that amazing? Jacob household had already began to worship strange gods. That's why God says you're not holding your vows. Because the only vow that Jacob had made was God you'll be my God. You will be God if you deliver me from my brother if you will deliver me from my enemies God I promise you you will be my God. But when things got well, when things got good, when life was good for Jacob, notice how his household got it. Notice that Jacob's family had accepted the foreign gods of the people that was around them. And so as he had gotten there, look, look, he said, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean. Listen to Change your garments. Change your garments. In similar fashion, many people do, uh, do not live up to the vow they made when they become Christians. Listen, many teenage Christians are zealous, no doubt. They're going to go out and they're going to set the world on fire. But what happens? They get influenced by their peers. They get influenced by the music that they listen to. They get influenced by the humanistic teachings in the schools that they attend. And so they often lose interest in spiritual matters. I'm telling you, college age kids is one of the hardest to keep in church. Because of all the influence that's on the outside. Many adult Christians who are influenced by the materialistic things of life, the material things and the immorality of our society begin to move God down the list. And what they once vowed as Christians, uh, what they once vowed standing before God, what they once vowed standing before church members and other people, it's long gone out of their mind. They have forgotten about their vows. And I'm telling you, I don't know what is going on with the pandemic, but it might be that America has forgotten uh, its vows to God and God might be shaking this nation up. I don't know if that's the case. But I'm just telling you this, uh, every time that I get up and I turn on the TV, we're not, we're not in a good place right now 
in, in this country that we live in? What about the vows of the people? Zealous at first, but I'm telling you, society begins to creep in. But again, I'll tell you this. The Bible would tell us and what God is telling Jacob, there is no excuse to forget your vows. Fifth thing is this. If we have forgotten our vows, we need to go back to the beginning. I love this. God looked at Jacob and said, here's what I want you to do, Jacob. I want you to go back to Bethel. I want you to go back to the place where you took that stone out from under your head and you made an altar that day and you, you made a vow unto me that I was going to be your God. I want you to go back to that place. I want you to go back to the beginning. I want you to go back to the roots. I want you to go back to the start. Uh, we notice that, that Jacob is told to go back to Bethel. And listen, in a similar way, Jesus told the church at Ephesus to go back where? To the beginning. Go back to the first love. Uh, Jesus said, uh, remember uh, where you have fallen from. And he said, in, in Ephesus, he said, repent and do the first work that you were called to do. And so many times uh, as Christians and people, we leave our first love. And, and, and so many times we need to go back to do that first work. We need to go back to that place. Someone said one time, where do I need to be? You need to be back at that place. Listen, sometimes when our mind gets messed up, sometimes when the devil is, 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 is working on our minds, uh, we need to go back to the place. Somebody says, well, how do you get back to God? You go back to the place where you left him. Go back to the place where you left him. That's exactly what God is telling Jacob. Jacob, you go back to the place where you made him out. It is at that place where you left me. It is that place that I want you to go and to remember that first love. Do the first work, church. Do the fundamentals. Uh, do, do the Bible studies. Do the prayer. In the time of our nation and what's going on, what do we need to do? We need to study God's Word. We need to pray. Thank you, Kathy, because we need to pray one for another. We need to do the first work that God has called us to do, that we vowed to do when we were Christians. We became Christians. Do the first work. What vows have you made? Let me ask you this. Let me flip the coin over. Not only what vows have you made, but what vows do you need to make? What vows to God do you need to make today and on behalf of your church, your family, yourself, your nation? Is there a vow that you need to make with God that you need to keep? Is there a place you need to go back to? Where is your Bethel? Where is the place? Because you see, finally, as we get ready to close, when we fulfill our forgotten vows, there are renewed blessings that happen at that place. When Jacob fulfilled his vow, it, the, the Bible tells us that God appeared to him and renewed the promises that he had made to Abraham and Isaac, Genesis 35. So it can be with us. So it can be with us. It may be that we have forgotten the original commitment that we made when we first obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. But if we just return to Him, if we go back to the place where we left Him, if we go back to our Bethel, if we go, listen, if we go back what I believe what Jacob did in repentance and prayer, if we go back to that place, look at these verses again. Verse 2, then Jacob said to his household and to all that were with him, put away your strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. It shows how far they've gotten away. It shows where his household is. Jacob has allowed all of this to happen. And he, in verse 3, and let us arise and let us go to Bethel. God has called me to go back to that place where I made my vow. And I will make there an altar unto God, another altar, another vow, who answered me in the day of my distress. God answered me that day and was with me in the way which I went. God had kept, has kept his promise. God has followed me all the days of my life. Look at verse 4. And, and they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods. Which were, I'm talking about repentance and prayer. Uh, strange God which were in their hands and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them uh, under the oak which was by Shechem. 
And they journeyed. And they journeyed. And the terror of God. Listen to this. And the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them. But notice this. They did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz. Luz was actually the real name of the place Bethel. It was called Bethel. He called it Bethel because of the dream that he had. And so he came to Luz, which is in the land of Canaan. That is Bethel. He and all the people that were with him. Verse 7. He goes, listen, he went back to the place where he made his vow. And he makes another altar. And he built there an altar. And he called the place El Bethel. Because there, right there, God appeared Unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. What vows have you made? What vows do you need to make? Are we fulfilling our vow of service and devotion to him? For you see this? Special blessings come to us when we hold our vow. Are you a Christian today but not living the dedicated and committed life that God expects? What are you doing about your vows? Then like Jacob, you've forgotten your vow. Maybe you're sitting there and you said, you know what, I made a vow back then or or on this time or this time in my life and I've forgotten my vow. Well, let me tell you what you need to do. And this is not my words. This is God's word. You need to come back to your battle. You need to come back to your place in full repentance because this, the blessing of heaven awaits for you if you do. If you're not a Christian, these same blessings can be yours if you will only accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you will meet him here in your your Bethel today, face to face, the way Jacob did at his Bethel. Are you keeping your vow? Do you need to make some vows? Does God need to be the priority in your life? Yes, He does. He needs to be top of your list. So many in our world today, so many in our society today, so many of our churches today have forgotten their vow. Jacob did the same, but God reminded him, come back to your battle. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and the opportunity that we can come and cheer. God, I pray today that as we've come and we've sung, and God, your spirit's been in this place. God, it's been a wonderful day already.